Mm -hmm. I'm Jana from Pearl Together and what I want to talk about today in this short technique video is how to successfully go from this to this without causing a bunch of tangles and frustration and a tangled hank is not a friendly hank. So let me show you. Now each company does their yarn, they wind up their yarn a little bit differently. So these are just some generalizations, knowing that, you know, some of the little ties might different be different on different brands of yarn. But in general, you've got this lovely loop that's been twisted together and you have one end tucked into the other. So you can tell that this is the bottom end because there's nothing tucked into anything. And then here's the top. So you can, you've got a, a bit that's tucked into another bit. Now here I can tell easily because that's where they've attached the tag. But if I look at a different skein, let's just pick one of these. Okay, this is Prairie Spun DK from Brown Sheep. I can look down here and see that this is a complete loop. There's nothing tucked in here. And the skein is, it's the little knobby part is tucked into this part. So I wanted, I would need to lift this over and take that out. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to undo this particular skein at the moment. But you get the idea. So what I'll do here is just simply take the part where the label is. And by the way, this is monochrome DK from Earth Yarn. And it's, it's squishy. It's lovely. Extra fine merino. I'm about to start a sweater. So if you want to learn about that, we're about to start the campsite cardigan knit along. What's with the little flippy thing I got? Anyway. Squirrel. So I'm going to just lift that up and over the top and undo that skein and just let it untwist. When it untwists, I've got this great big oval. Okay. Now what I want to keep track of here, I want to make sure that all the strands are on each side. I don't want to accidentally put my hand through and like end up like that. You know what I mean? You don't want to put it on your swift that way. You want to put it on your swift or over your neck or over at the back of a chair or on someone's hands or however, but you just want to make sure that everything is straight. Now on these particular skeins, I only have a couple places where they're tied. One where the label is, and then I have one right next to the label here that is tied and I can see that that's an overhand knot. Now what that is actually is the beginning and the ending of this hank. Then Sometimes there'll be another place, and there is on this one, there's another place down here. So one of the, this one is not the beginning and the end, and I know that because this is just, it goes all the way around and I can slide this up and down. This is just simply to keep the bottom of this together so it doesn't twist upon itself and start making a mess. All right, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to undo this. Actually, I'm going to show you on a different one that I did earlier. Same, same, however. And how I'm going to determine how to place this on my swift or on the legs of an upturned chair or over your knees or on someone's hands or whatever you're using to hold this with. It makes a great deal of difference how you have this and whether it's twisted or not. And what I mean by that is simply these strands that are on the inside of the, the big circle or on the outside of the big circle. Or if you have part of it turned like this, that's not going to go well. Check it out. Let's go put this on my skein and I'll show you what I mean. Or on my uh, tabletop swift and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I also want to express my gratitude for my new patrons. My f I have several new patrons this last month, including Ann Frost from the I Thought I Knew How podcast. Thanks for supporting my channel as well. Julie Winton, Gloria Sagansky, Shirley Wilkerson and Alice Hummel. Thanks so much for signing up to become patrons and helping keep these videos coming to you all each and every week. If you'd like to learn how to become a patron and a supporter of the show and of the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together and you can see what perks I'm offering for a pledge of just a few dollars a month. The first thing I'm going to do is remove, I'm going to remove this blue, lighter blue yarn and the label. And I've got my super pointy scissors here. So I'm just going to put my, I like to put my finger underneath because you don't, you definitely don't want to accidentally cut your, the yarn you just bought. <laughs> okay, hang on to the label because we're going to, I like to keep the label with the center pull cake after I wind it up. 
Make sure to keep all your strands on the corresponding sides. Make sure to keep everything open and separate. The other thing you want to really try to avoid is you want to keep the inside the inside and the outside the outside. So don't, don't let it do this and, and turn itself inside out if you can help it. So then I'm going to cut this lighter colored yarn also, strand or thread. I'm going to cut this off because I don't need that holding it together anymore. Really, Peanut? I don't need help. Then I'm going to go ahead and put this on my Swift. And you'll notice, you'll notice that I have uh, made sure to turn this so that nothing's inside out. You don't want the insides becoming the outsides. Really, Peanut? I don't need your help. So I'm going to put this on my Swift. I have a tabletop Swift and it's not terribly adjustable. And the reason I would really like to have an umbrella Swift is because they're more adjustable. Now, I don't want to stretch this out too much, so I'm going to move this peg in and I'm going to move this other peg in um, cause I don't want to stretch, I don't want to stretch my yarn. You, you don't have to move them all in. I want it on here snugly, but I don't want it stretched. Now I can see right here that this strand is going down and across and it's going to connect to this knot right here, or it's, you know, it's, it's involved in that somehow. So I want to make sure that if I follow this strand around, I can see, quit that. I can see where it comes along. And what I mean by the insides and the outsides is you don't want one of these to be like that. You don't want any twists in your 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 loop or your skeins here because that definitely will cause tangling when you go to unwind all this. So you want to make sure that everything is straight and nothing is turned funny. Okay, now I'm going to go around here to find this knot again, right here. I am simply going to cut right below that overhand knot, okay? Easy enough. Then I've got the two ends, the two ends. And I can tell that this one's coming from the outside. See, this one or not. That's where they brought it up and over to tie it. This is actually, you can tell, is on the inside. Can you see that? It goes on the inside here. So I'm gonna take this one and tuck it under the inside all the way around because I don't want it to be on the outside. That's what causes tangles. This one, comes up round on the bottom there and that appears to be on the outside but I'm making show up see maybe not because look here that's what happens if I'm wrong okay so clearly I was mistaken I'm gonna go ahead and put that back because that will cause tangling see how I'm just lifting this up and tucking that back under and then I'm gonna go get the other one that I thought was the inside which is really coming from the outside of my yarn strands here Okay, this one is apparently coming from the outside. And I can determine that if I just go around a little bit and make sure, yep, there we go. Okay, that one's gonna be good. So I've only, I've only taken off maybe four or five feet, so it's not a big mess. This one though, I wanna tuck this on the inside here and I wanna make sure that it doesn't get tangled. So I'm gonna wrap it around this post or I'm gonna make sure and tuck it on the inside so that I can start winding and not have that be in my way. So now I'm gonna take this strand over to my ball winder, which I have set up here off camera. And I just attach this on to my ball winder and begin. And you'll see, I start going pretty slow just because I wanna make sure that I was correct about the insides and outsides of these this group of strands. Hopefully that makes sense. And see, it's all going pretty well. And I start off going pretty slowly and then I'll pick up speed when I'm pretty sure that everything is straight and it's all good. So you can see how, the, now so you can tell this was definitely the right choice because it's all coming off pretty freely. So that's one thing that you just need to be aware of. And if you need to turn one of these and flip it, that's how you can determine whether things are gonna come off well or not. All right, I hope you found that helpful and hopefully that will minimize any tangling you have in the future. If you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful to avoid tangling, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, see you next time.